Ooh. All right, so last time we left off on our budget Turbo 5.7 Hemi, all it is is a stock crank, forged rotating assembly, so pistons and rods, factory crank. Um, and then that's it. We're gonna put a nice camshaft in it, some springs from Flying Ryan Performance. And all we have to do is see if we can take this budget 5.7 Hemi and take it to 1,000 horsepower. Easy, right? So in this box right here is where all the magic is going to happen. This box is from our friends over at Flying Ryan Performance. And if you don't know who they are, they're one of the bigger shops for Gen 3 Hemi stuff. So we've got a Flying Ryan Performance camshaft. We've got a bunch of the gaskets that we're going to need. We've got push rods, springs. We've got the DOD delete stuff. We've got lifters, like everything that we're gonna need to put a stout top end in this thing. Cause we're gonna wanna rev it a little bit more than what the factory's gonna be revved out to. Aiming for somewhere around like the 7,500 RPM range, maybe a little bit higher if our turbos warrant that we should push it higher. I love this box. Now this FRP cam is actually one of their grinds. <laughs> so we actually got the Tomahawk is what the cam is. Now one thing I found unique uh, to the Hemi versus the LS platform, when I get this out. And you know what, I actually have an LS camshaft to compare this one to. This one is an LS camshaft. So uh, one of the main things I've noticed so far um, between the two is that the end journal here on the Hemi is actually much smaller than the end journal one on the uh, LS. And then the front one on the Hemi is actually much, much thicker than the one on the LS. So the bearing in the Hemi is actually this wide and the bearing in the LS is actually this wide. Um, not sure the reasoning behind all that, but uh, I'm sure they both suck. And I mean that in like all the engines have their own valve train problems. The Hemi is notorious for the Hemi tick, so we're gonna try and not do that. <laughs> Surgical gloves, prostate check. I don't have that much assembly lube, but the camshaft, definitely not one spot that I want to uh, be cheap with my lube on. I definitely want to get it where the bearings go. You'll notice that I've also put the bolt in the end of the camshaft. That's just for extra leverage. You don't want to damage these bearings. Putting this camshaft in, so we're gonna go slow. Actually, that journal right there is significantly smaller than the outer journal as well. So not only is the, the one bigger on the front, it's bigger than all the middle ones. Oh, camshaft's in. Nice. Nice little bump stick. Oh, I love that. Next up, our cam sprocket. Now this actually has like a phaser built into it and we need to lock that out. And once again, Flying Ryan Performance sent us the tools to lock this out. So we've got this piece that locks uh, this little spring tension piece. And then this, it actually locks it out. You do need to take this apart. I'm not going to make a tutorial on how to do this. I have to watch a tutorial to do this, um, but there is a specific bolt on the backside you cannot remove because the spring will unwind, and if you do that, then this cam is useless. All right, so this takes the tension off the spring, I'm told. That goes in there. Now, if I rev this right, which I hope I did, uh, it's the one directly under this cam keyway thing. Um, this bolt is the one you just crack loose, one turn loose, so all of these are gonna come out. There is one different length bolt, so I'm just gonna put them where they came out. As you can see, this one on the left here is further. And now this piece should just slide out of the way. All right, so it appears that just this pin kind of gets wedged in there. And that's just gonna stop this thing from being able to cam and rotate on the inside. So a little bit of tapping, it says. And that's what it looks like flush in there. I had to hammer it a little bit more than I wanted to, but uh, yeah, and the plate just slides back over and we're locked out. Ooh, a bit of blue. Dang, these are 14 foot pounds, so that's pretty tight. Next, we can put our cam plate back on. This only goes one way. I can't find a quick torque on it, so mechanic tight. Click, perfect. So there's actually a mark right here on the, the camshaft. There's two little uh, markings on the chain. And then there's a mark on the bottom down here on the crank and a mark on the chain as well. And I believe as long as you have all those lined up and then you put your tensors on, you should be good. Only six mil bolts so they don't go super tight. And I actually just have a little piece of tungsten in here like compressing the tensioner so it's easier to bolt on. 
Uh, make sure our chain is on the bottom still. It's that one. These two. And now when we pull this out, it should be in time. Now you know we're in the ballpark because as it's set up right now, cylinder one is at top dead center. So if we rotate this 360 degrees, we should be at top dead center again on the piston, but because the camshaft rotates half as fast as the crank does, now our timing mark should be directly at six o'clock down here. Um, and it is on this tooth right here, which is exactly six o'clock. So pretty sure we got it right. Look at us go fart smelling and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna pull the uh, oil pump apart right here, just this valve relief. I'm gonna see if we can shim it to make it a little bit more oil pressure. Uh, so you just pull this piece out, put a couple shims behind the spring, put that piece back in. All right, I think this is gonna work good. I have some copper washers here. This one is roughly 35 thousandths, maybe a bit less than that if I recalibrate. Almost 40 thousandths, I guess. But that's what I'm gonna use in this. That's just gonna go on top of this piece right here, and that's just gonna get bolted back in. And now we should have some extra oil pressure because we're gonna need it if we're spinning this thing maybe up to 8,000 RPM. All right, so we put a bit of assembly lube in it, cleaned it out. I'm not about to go out of my way to start shimming this pump and shit now either. I've never shimmed one putting it in. Probably never will. Let's see what happens. While we're in the top side of the engine, we might as well take these things out. And those are gonna get replaced with these plugs. Come on. Oh no, I broke it. I ended up breaking off a back one too. All I did was put a screw in it um, and then pull it, pry it out with the screw. And then this piece, I'm just gonna be mindful of shit in the valley cover here. You should just lock that piece out. If nothing else, it's just gonna look a little bit cleaner. They basically all broke so I have to pull them all out this way. And it's not difficult. It's just annoying. We get to put our genuine Hellcat lifters in. So this is probably the fanciest part of the build. You know, brand new Hellcat lifters. As if I don't already own a Hellcat, but sure. These lifters are definitely different than LS lifters in the fact that there is no side oiling hole and it gets all its oiling through the push rod, which I find a little bit weird, but that's just how it happens. and. It's probably part of the oiling issue with this thing. <laughs> the valve train oiling issue, because there is a big one in the Hemis. Can't hurt just to squirt some oil down the holes. They're already like super pre-lubed already too. Just doesn't hurt to be extra cautious. Man, sometimes it's nice, like a, a huge change in pace from the formula cart and the fact that you know, all this just fits together. There's only one real way that it fits together and there's no like thinking about it. It's just like adult Legos basically. But with the cart, there's a lot of like fabrication. I've got to plan things out. I've got to figure it out. And you know what? Sometimes it's just nice to have a break from that. And recently I've had some things where I have this thing, it's called aphantasia, where I can't see things in my head. Basically I have zero imagination. And sometimes it just, it kind of gets to me and in my soul and stuff. When I'm working on my cart and I close my eyes and I just can't picture anything, it's just black. I can't picture red, I can't picture a shape, I can't picture anything. It's just black. So it definitely doesn't hinder me in my day-to-day -day life so often, but I just, I wish I could see stuff in my mind. It bothers me sometimes. Taking a bit of time to do stuff like this, it's definitely um, a nice change of pace. Now the short block is like officially complete besides the timing cover and the oil pan on the bottom, but that is like, Super complete bottom end. Next up, we gotta do the top end. The top end was really dirty when I picked it up. So uh, the cylinder heads are here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take those over to Legacy Auto Group. I'm gonna get them washed in the part washer and then we can start assembling those things by relapping in the valve slightly, putting new new springs in there and, uh, and then getting them on and then putting the push rods in. Like this is close. I like it. It makes me feel good to get closer to the finish line. 
you know, because projects I start around here typically don't make it that far. Alrighty, so here's our Hemi head, fresh out of the parts washer. It's not like perfect, I'm still gonna have to go over this from Scotch Bright, but it's way cleaner than it was. You'll notice that it's not a true like hemispherical head shape, but this is where Hemi gets its name from basically. The valves are on opposing sides and it's supposed to be a hemispherical combustion chamber. Um, you'll notice two spark plugs on uh, each cylinder. I think that's something to do with emissions. Uh, we're just gonna have to live with that for now. But we're gonna pull all the valves out of this, clean it all up, put our new valve springs in this thing, our new seals. We do have a little bit of wear on the top of the valve stems. Uh, I think we're just gonna send it with this one. And like I said, eventually we'll build a nice motor, but for a budget motor, it's going back together this way. A budget Hemi? <laughs> Are you laughing because there's no such thing as a budget Hemi? I just, is that what they call an oxymoron? Oh yeah, some elbow grease. It's not like me to enjoy the cleaning process, but right now I'm totally just vibing, listening to music, cleaning these things, and I'm having a lot of fun to the point where I've even cleaned the front surface of the cylinder head so that it looks good when it's on the block. Turn in a new leaf, rock, turn in a new rock. Alrighty, time to start pulling some valves out. Hopefully our spring compressor tool is big enough, it seems to be. Well, valve spring tool is not the best, but it works enough. Head is clean for the most part. I have to pull the valve stem seals off. Before I do that, I just wanna make sure that I have valve stem seals. It looks like those. Ah, here's our springs. And spring shims. Quickly pull out our old seals. Come on, you little oval fuck. Safe to say I'm ruining these ones on the way out. Socket, put the thingamajigger on there. That one on this one. You can hear a change note when it gets to the bottom. Mint. So our pack springs, they just come with the springs. You are gonna have to reuse the retainers and the, uh, the retaining locks. Uh, from the factory. We also have to add this 60 thousandths shim. So that's just gonna go underneath. This one's slightly thicker than the one that was on there. And we are going to be reusing our same valves. So there's that as well. This is not the best tool for this job. This tool is very cheap and it's more of a small engine C-clamp than it is for a big V8. Just gonna put a small dab of assembly lube on there. It should keep them in place. One spring ready for 8,000 RPM. And there we go, the first head complete. You know what, I'm still feeling a little bit vibey, so I'm just gonna take the second head, do that one off camera. See you guys in a little bit, probably tomorrow. I'm just vibing, man. Oh my lord, cylinder head done. I love that for me. All right, so we get to pull condom off of this thing. So we're gonna be using MLX gaskets. We're also gonna be using stock head bolts, but I have a brand new set. If they can hold down a thousand horsepower uh, Hellcat motor, they can hold down this, it's the same head bolts. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. If we have an issue after, we're gonna to have to replace head gaskets and head bolts. But for now, trying to do a budget, MLX head gasket, multi-layer, really good. Um, we're gonna start with this side first. I did break off one dowel pin. I did manage to break one dowel pin on the engine. Uh, this is an LS1. I'm wondering if this is going to be deep enough. It, it might be too deep actually, but uh, it's the right size. Whether it fits or not, we're about to find out. This was definitely my own mistake, uh, but the dowel pins are basically just a locator. Hold your head gasket and your head in place while you bolt it down. And there we go, just like the factory one. 
pretty close anyways. I like to use some of this spray tac uh, on my head gaskets for whatever reason. It's just a habit that I got into with this or like copper spray or something, but. I think red's cooler. Probably don't need it. Just one of the things I've always done, so I'm gonna do it. Helps seal up some of those imperfections on the head gasket or on my block that, you know, isn't decked or the heads that aren't decked and they're cleaned off with some scotch bright. Here. I love me some good cylinder head. Now the reason that I'm just reusing the head bolts is in like an LS or something like that, they use a small little tiny like 7 16 head bolt. I believe this one is 12 millimeter, um, which is like one millimeter bigger than the LS bolts. Uh, I'm gonna put some ARP lube on this stuff. I just wanted to get one in there to make sure. All right, a couple of stages on these bad boys. First round, 25 foot-pounds for our main bolts in sequence, which usually you work from the inside outwards. So first step, 25. Second step is just 40. And then after the 40, We put a 90 degree turn on them. Maybe you want to watch me from all the way over there. Maybe. This is how I look at my little nook and cranny over here. You can see how much mess I've got made. So here's also that. All right, our last move, 90 degrees on these. It says 111 Newton meters, 117 Newton meters. So. I'm gonna convert that to foot pounds and I think I'm just gonna do the rest of them in uh, foot pounds. Right around 88 foot pounds, so. It just gives me more leverage if I can use my longer uh, torque wrench. And uh, that's kind of how I did the rods too, was just, it was a torque to angle and I just figured out what the stretch on the bolt was and you know. Damn, Gina, look at that outfit go. I'm bringing that, back the 90s. I was just gonna say, the 90s pants, NASA hoodie. <laughs> Yeah, normally I wear it with like a cute little crop top or something too, but this is a chilly out, but not cold enough to like wear something super bundled. So I don't know if this is the vibe today. You like it? Uh, I like it. We got one cylinder head on. Just gotta put the other one on. Same, literally the exact, exact same thing I just did. So don't gotta show yet, but I'm gonna put the other one on anyways. Or maybe I'll just leave one on. Run out like a force on. Yeah, sure. Dang, look at that beast of an engine right now. I have some billet valve covers coming. They're just cheap, like Alibaba billet valve covers that I'm gonna get powder coated. Intake's gonna get powder coated. The front cover is gonna get painted. Um, the pan is already black. It's gonna look pretty decent in there, I think. I wish someone made a little bit lower ram than this, because this right now is like, it just rubs my hood. Well, I've definitely made an interesting mistake that I didn't pick up on when I assembled the, the turbo kit. So I took those hooker headers and I flipped them upside down and then I put them on the opposite side so the flanges face down. However, it appears that like I need a bolt hole here and a bolt hole here and a bolt hole there and a bolt hole there. So I'm gonna have to drill and tap these heads out uh, in those four locations, which it looks like you can probably do, um, but it's just not something that I anticipated. So for whatever reason, this side has the gasket on it. So you can see when I flipped it right here that I need this hole and there's no hole there and I need that hole down at the bottom and there's no hole there and this one and this one. But when I mocked it up, I must have just used like the front four holes and those are in the right positions because they're on all of them. Uh, like they're on all four corners in the front and the rear. <laughs> so I kind of messed that one up. So we're gonna have to drill and tap those out. The Hemi Fox is under wraps right now just until we get some push rods and I drill out those cylinder heads and then we can put the engine back in. Well, once we get the clutch and stuff on. Temporarily on pause because you'll notice the GI Slow is over here and the formula cart is not and it's under the knife. I'm preparing this to be a different class car this year and we're going to the States in March. 
my first ever event in the States and I want this car to look good because I want it to represent like part of what I'm doing and I want it to be clean. So just a little sneak preview here, but headers are down and forward now. Air to water intercooler is gone. Air to air intercooler in the front going in. But we are going to our first big event in the States and I'm so excited for that. Uh, all of you guys know when I make this video right here which event it is, but you guys can probably guess if you really look for it. I love you guys. Thanks for supporting the channel. I miss you guys. Peace easy. Get that V.